I want you to think of the last time someone you know did something really stupid. You have it? Can you explain why they did it? Not that easy, is it? In fact, it's something difficult to understand. Why are people stupid? Hi, my name is Fede and this is Eternally Curious. Before we can begin to understand why do people do stupid things, we first need a framework. In 1972, Italian economic historian Carlo Cipolla wrote an essay on human stupidity, which, despite its tongue-in-cheek tone, was remarkably scientific in its formulation. It outlines the fundamental laws of human stupidity, just like Newton, but not on physics. On stupid people. There are five fundamental laws that can help us understand how to navigate the sea of nonsense that surrounds us and makes us lose money, time, energy, appetite, cheerfulness, good health, and makes us want to blow our brains out. The first law. Always and inevitably everyone underestimates the number of stupid individuals in circulation. This is pretty important. No matter how many stupid people you think are around, there is probably a lot more. So whatever percentage you're thinking of right now, it's probably an underestimate. Let's just call it sigma, the percentage of stupid people around. The second law. The probability that a certain person be stupid is independent of any other characteristic of that person. You might think that among certain groups, stupid people would be abundant, whereas in other places they would be rare. Nope. Stupid people seem to be equally distributed among any population. It's like a genetic trait. Nature somehow just figures it out. This is not the third law. It's important that we define our terms. What is a stupid person anyway? Stupidity doesn't mean to be ignorant, silly, or slow to understand things. No, 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 no. A stupid person causes losses to others while gaining nothing for themselves and possibly even incurring losses. So if what you do hurts others and hurts yourself too, you're stupid. In economic terms, this is the opposite of a win-win situation. It's essentially a non-zero-sum game where everybody loses for no f***ing reason. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. Yeah, but who does that, right? I know. Except the first law. This has some important implications and corollaries. Thanks to the third fundamental law of human stupidity, we can divide the entire planet into four kinds of people. The intelligent, the helpless, the bandit, and of course, the stupid. We can conveniently represent them in these Cartesian quadrants. The x-axis shows personal gains. The more you go to the right, the more the actions that you do benefit you. Similarly, the y vertical axis shows other people's. The more you go down, the more you're hurting them. All clear? See how the four categories perfectly fall into place. High personal gains while also doing gains for others. Intelligent people do things that benefit themselves as well as everyone else. They literally make the world a better place which you can actually calculate and give it a numerical value. The higher that number, the more intelligent they are. Remember that this has nothing to do with how much they have studied, how much money they have, what their IQ is. This is purely calculating how good they are doing for themselves and everyone else at the same time. The helpless take actions that benefit others while hurting themselves. You see where I'm going with this. The bandits do things that benefit themselves while causing losses to others, usually the helpless. And of course, on the polar opposite of the intelligent, you have the stupid. With their unpredictable, seemingly nonsensical and utterly stupid actions, they hurt themselves and everyone else around them. Let's see some examples. Say someone shoots you in the leg just to rob you 50 bucks. Or if they kill you so they can rape your wife for one night. That's not a very good bandit. First off, their benefit is very slim while taking extremely big risks. And the loss for you and others is huge. A perfect bandit is somewhere on this line. Huge benefit for themselves with either no losses for you or a lot. The rapist murderer, on the other hand, is somewhere around here, very close to the border of sheer stupidity. Those behind the multinational corporation that in order to save some quids cause... Uh, one, of one of the, the biggest, biggest environmental, environmental disasters, disasters and, public and public health, health crisis, crisis in human history, history. are also pretty close to be utterly stupid. Again, small gain, huge loss to themselves too. The helpless usually do not recognize how dangerous stupid people are. This is not at all surprising. Their failure to understand is just another expression of their helplessness. What's truly astounding is that also intelligent people and bandits fail to recognize how dangerous stupid people are. If you're intelligent, you think you can predict and somehow counteract the actions of stupid people. And if you're a bandit, you think you can take advantage of them. Oh, you are so wrong. First off, you might think that a stupid person will only do harm to themselves. 
But this is confusing the stupid with the helpless. <coughs> Let me be perfectly clear. It is impossible to gain or take advantage of stupid people. All they will do is bring you misery and suffering for inexplicable reasons which go beyond your understanding. Always. And that's the whole point. Their actions are incomprehensible. You can understand the actions of a bandit. They want more for themselves and they don't care about you. You know this so you can reasonably predict what they're gonna do. The same goes for the helpless. They will be taken advantage of by the bandits. They just can't help themselves. But a stupid person, it's a whole different thing. And the worst part about it is they don't know that they're stupid. If they did, they would do something to stop hurting themselves for no apparent reason, which would make them less stupid. It's an endless trap of stupidity. Which brings us to the fourth law. Non-stupid people always underestimate the damaging power of stupid individuals. I think you get the point by now. The fifth and last law is really just a corollary of the previous four. A stupid person is the most dangerous type of person, which also means that a stupid person is more dangerous than a bandit. If you think about society as a whole, if everyone were a bandit, there would be no net loss for society, just a transfer of wealth and welfare from one person to another. And overall, they would cancel each other out. Society Society wouldn't get better, but also wouldn't get any worse. And if everyone were intelligent, we would all be better off and we would live in a more sane society which improved exponentially over time. But when stupid people are at work, the story is completely different. Now, because of the second law, the number of stupid people is not affected by time, race, space, or any other socioeconomic factor. So how do we explain a thriving society versus a collapsing civilization? Remember that both societies are plagued by the same percentage of stupid people sigma. The difference is that in declining societies, stupid people have power. The helpless can help themselves, but the intelligent and the bandits should. So it's their fault. If you're watching this video, you're probably intelligent or a bandit. Either way, this framework should help you understand the dangers of stupidity and that you should avoid it at all costs. In particular, if you want the society you live in to thrive and not go into chaos, stop putting stupid people in position of power where they can exercise their talents and make everyone miserable. If you can, put someone intelligent. But if you absolutely can't and all you can choose from is between a bandit and a stupid person, choose the bandit. At least you'll know how they will act and you can take the necessary precautions. Also, a big part of your job is trying to convince the helpless when they're not being fooled by the bandits or the stupid. Last, nobody's perfectly consistent with their actions. So if sometimes you do something very stupid and then you're fooled by someone, but generally you're doing pretty intelligent things, on average, you're intelligent. So where you fall in the quadrants is calculated as the overall weighted average position of all the actions you take in your life. To help you with your mission in making the world less stupid, I have prepared these handy prints, link in the description. It's simple, put the name of your friend, coworker, boss, lover, or whatever, in here and day by day map all of their actions. Do this for a while and very soon you'll have a pretty good picture of whether that person is a bandit, intelligent, helpless or stupid. And if they're stupid, there is only one thing you can do. Run away from them. For the really adventurous, you can ask your friends to do the same for you. And if it turns out that you're stupid and then you think about it and you accept it, then you're not so stupid after all. And there is hope for you too. I hope you enjoyed this video, I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. If you'd like to read the original essay by Cipolla, I highly recommend it. You'll find the link in the video description. If you like this video, remember to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to make sure that I can keep making videos like this, consider supporting me on Konos, where you can pledge whatever you feel like, and you can follow all the courses I'm teaching and learning divided by subject. Thank you for being curious.